working can all now be found in the Oxford English. Uh, Major General Bob Scales is on the line right now. Good day to have him, given all that's going on. Uh, General Scales, how are you? Oh, I'm well. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks well, for having me on. Well, we're tickled to have you on. And look, I need to lay out something that has just happened. Uh, first of all, you heard what the president said yesterday. He's talking uh, to PBS, and he makes some comments about the situation in Syria. First of all, I have not made a decision. Uh, I have gotten options from our military, uh, had extensive discussions with my national security team. We do not believe that given the delivery systems using rockets that the opposition could have uh, carried out these attacks. We have concluded that uh, the Syrian government in fact carry these out and if that's so then there need to be international consequences. All right, General Scales, you heard that. Now, yep. just breaking in the last few moments, an Associated Press story that says, here's the lead paragraph, the intelligence leaking Syrian President Bashar Assad or his inner circle to an alleged chemical weapons attack that killed at least 100 people is, quote, no slam dunk, with questions remaining about who actually controls some of Syria's chemical weapons stores and doubts about whether Assad himself ordered the strike, U.S. intelligence officials say. E what do you read? You're a practice hand in this town. What do you read into that? Well, I think uh, what this report's referring to is some intelligence that really came in yesterday. Uh, it's based on uh, uh, telephone intercepts from rather low-ranking Syrian officers. Uh, uh, my understanding is that one of them was a curator of one of these large chemical weapon storage facilities, and another was a tactical officer of some sort, uh, railing back at each other for one of them having uh, ordered the delivery of, of um, uh, GRAD, G-R-A-D, that's that's a multiple rocket launcher delivered uh, uh, a chemical strike on this region in Damascus and, and just absolutely berating him, which suggests maybe that Assad had nothing to do with this chemical strike, that it was done by a local commander, but, uh, either but, because he was frustrated in his inability to, to defeat uh, the rebels with conventional weapons, or he just did it because he was a really bad guy. But well, the president true, said just the opposite. He said, we are concluded that the government ordered these attacks. Well, I've heard both sides. Uh, my, my own opinion is that this was a government strike. It was our, uh, uh, ordered by Assad or his henchmen, and that Assad is 100 percent culpable for this atrocity. I don't think, in my own opinion, even though there's other people who question it, even as late as today, in my own opinion, there's no doubt about who's responsible. And, and there's little doubt that what this story is, when a U.S. intelligence official speaks like on this level to the Associated Press, yeah. this is a decided attempt by the intelligence community to say, hold on a minute, this is CYA, is it not? Oh, I think there's no question about that. And what we're seeing are some real headwinds over the last day or so. The British are beginning to have cold feet about joining this uh, this assault with their submarine until they hear something definitive from the U.N. chemical inspectors. The U.N. chemical inspectors now look like they won't be returning until Sunday, and it's unlikely that Obama will order this strike uh, uh, during the weekend. Uh, we're seeing also, and then we're, and even within Congress, you're seeing various congressmen step forward uh, asking for a fuller and more complete explanation of this chemical strike and what the U.S. military options are in retaliating. Major General Bob Scales is our guest. And General, uh, the lead paragraph of just about every serious news organization reporting on this yesterday began something like this. U.S. airstrikes into Syria will begin within days. It will involve Tomahawk cruise missiles fired from warships in the eastern Mediterranean. They'll last less than a week, and they'll target a limited number of Syrian military installations. Why do we all know that? And by leaking all of those details, Details, doesn't that sort of undermine the mission? Well, you know, I got to tell you, um, as a guy who used to plan these types of operations, I'm just shaking my head. I mean, obviously, you can't have uh, tactical, uh, a strategic surprise, but you can have tactical surprise. And I have images of these uh, uh, Syrian soldiers hauling furniture and driving cars and and moving airplanes and hiding material just as fast as they can. Well, it, of course they it are. It makes sense to me. You, you know, would do that, wouldn't you? Absolutely. I mean, war is a two-sided endeavor. I mean, uh, the enemy has a vote, and if the enemy can't strike back, he'll do whatever he can to mitigate. 
the losses from a uh, from a U.S. strike in the hope that we'll only do it once, we'll feel good about it, then we'll pack up and go home, and he'll still remain in the field capable of defeating the rebels. Uh, General, you also you just mentioned that there's room, uh, rumor now or there's word out that uh, Britain might be getting cold feet. Uh, that might be partly because Prime Minister Cameron called Parliament into session to discuss this. Uh, I understand they're different and they operate under different rules than America does, but based on what you know, given the fact that the U.N. is not going to be behind this because Russia is against it, so we can't get the Security Council on board, and this doesn't fall under NATO, shouldn't the President consult with Congress before he does oh. any strike absolutely this is not a moving target these are static targets and they aren't going anywhere uh, we've already gone three or four days beyond and the end whatever the enemy is going to do uh, he's already done and so I mean let's face it a strike by 250 cruise missiles uh, deep into the heart of Syria, however you color this, is an act of war. And this nation should never commit an act of war uh, without consulting and probably getting authorization from Congress to do it. That is the surest way for this president, uh, first of all, to do the proper consultations before he jumps onto this, and secondly, to ensure that the American people are behind him. The last poll I saw was something like 9% of the American population wants him to do that. That's pretty low. Yeah, con uh, Congress and the press are more popular than this. Action. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let me ask you this, though. I mean, uh, w w just a quick question. Will we have to put uh, jets over Syrian airspace? I don't think so. Well, they're moving it, a lot of jets into the region. What's going on with that? Yeah, I don't think so. I think what happened is these are contingencies. Well, uh, and, it, and that's it, the second it, question I have for you. Yeah. If we carry out this cruise missile strike, there's likely to be some reaction. You don't just sit by and do nothing in a situation like that. What will the Syrians do? What will the Iranians do? What will the Russians do? Boy, this is the thing that's missing in this debate. Exactly. Uh, and, and that is the idea that the enemy has a vote. And this is a mean-spirited group of killers with nothing to lose. And allies, China, Russia, and India, who are delight uh, are, uh, and uh, Iran, who are delighted to help. Let's just run down the scenario. The most likely is that they'll fire chemical rockets into, into Israel uh, in retaliation. Boy, that's going to really escalate the level of violence. He may, uh, they may use uh, a surrogates like Hezbollah to, to strike American targets, both overseas and perhaps even at home. Uh, the Russians may ratchet up the, the delivery of uh, very deadly uh, weapons, particularly aircraft, brand new aircraft and helicopters to replace those that we, de uh, we destroyed. Now, there's no good to come out of this. And, uh, and if we're not committed to being in this for the long haul, and God knows I hope we aren't, yeah. then we ought to be expecting it. All right. Uh, uh, Major General Bob Skells, thanks so much for joining us. By the way, how's the Army football team looking? Do they start this weekend or next weekend? Yeah, how about those Redskins? Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, yeah. thank you, John.